What we're looking at today is an aspect of JavaScript known as promises. Now, promises are something that's been around in a number of the major libraries uh, for quite a while now. But as of uh, JavaScript version 6, it's something that's actually available um, in the standard itself. Though, whichever way you go, one of the library versions or the standard version, the concepts and pretty much all of the details are very much the same. But what I've got here is just a very simple website where I've got a couple of buttons. If I click get all, the JavaScript makes an AJAX call back to some web server that delivers us this list of temperatures and cities and displays them. And then I've got the get warmest that makes exactly the same AJAX call um, and then loops through, finds the warmest city and then displays the information for that. And if we take a look at the JavaScript, uh, we can see here we've got this weather manager class and there we've got the get all. And you can see I'm using uh, jQuery here for my AJAX call, but other libraries work in very, very similar ways. And what I'm doing here is the more old fashioned way of doing it, which is I make the call and I pass in as parameters to the AJAX call callbacks for success when we do get the data back or error if for some reason we don't get the data back. And so we can see on the error, I'm just um, setting an error message. And on the success, I've got this display all method that just loops through and forms up the appropriate HTML that we're going to display. Uh, and then similarly, on that get warmest, I make exactly the same AJAX call, except my success callback here is display warmest. And that's where I loop through and just get hold of the one city that's the warmest. And that is done, as I say, without using promises. So if I were doing this using promises, which are available in jQuery, I would change that. So I would say on the end of here, dot then, because what's happening is that AJAX call actually returns one of these promises and then is a method of the promise. And then I take uh, my two callbacks, so the success callback and the failure callback, um, and then having passed them into the promise, I can get rid of them from original call. Uh, we will save that. And then if we go and refresh the page here, um, and do get all, it will behave in exactly the same way. And just to show you the error, if I was to do something silly like misspell the address of the web service, then we'll see that when we run it there, uh, we just get the error message popped up in there. So that's the sort of way that you'll initially see promises being used. And in that situation, it's very hard to see much benefit at all. We can see it there with the passing the functions, the callbacks directly into the AJAX call and there with the promise. However, if we start analyzing this code, it immediately shows some other problems as well. And the chief problem is um, it's monolithic. There's no separation of concerns. So in the same bit of JavaScript code, we're both calling the web service and we're forming up our HTML display. And for anyone who's done any server-side programming, that sort of thing is an absolute no-no. And as soon as your JavaScript gets more complicated, it's really something you want to be avoiding. So what I've done to take a step in the right direction is I've put in this weather service, which is another class whose job is going to be purely to deal with the AJAX calls to get the data. So what I'll do is in the constructor of the weather manager, I'll create a new weather service. So then in here, I will call uh, this dot weather service dot and then the name of the function is get weather. And then into that, I could pass my success and my failure. And then get rid of the direct Ajax call. And then in get warmest, we want to do exactly the same thing. So we'll copy that and then just change what happens on the success. So pop that in there. And although that's not going to change the behavior at all, we have now separated out the Ajax calls into a separate file from the DOM manipulation. I mean, there's lots of libraries that will do that in, in more sophisticated ways, but it's the concept that's important. And we should still get the same behavior. So when I run that, we get our get all and we get our get warmest um, working fine. But that's a refactoring. That's not really a behavioral change. Because what uh, we're now going to do is think, well, hang on. 
this is potentially a bit inefficient because get all calls the data back from the web server and get warmest calls the data back from the web service and it's the same data why do we want to waste time doing doing it twice particularly if it were a lot of data and once we've put the code into this weather service it's an ideal opportunity to do what's known as caching which is to say that once we've called the um, the web service once we just keep hold of the data remember it in memory on the browser and then it's much quicker to get at it um, but there is a problem with doing that sort of thing um, because of the way the data arrives using callbacks. And so if I wanted to just change this uh, get weather so that it either gives you back the cache data or if there isn't any cache data there, goes and gets it, um, you hit some interesting structural problems because essentially there are really three circumstances in which this get weather could be called when we're doing caching. It could either be called for the very first time, in which case obviously it's got to make the call and go to the server. But if it were the second time it were being called, it can still be in two circumstances because we could call get weather when the date has already been fetched and is cached. And in that case, we'd simply return it. But we could also be calling get weather after the original AJAX call has been made, but before the data has been returned. And so we've got to write some software that deals with those three circumstances, the first call, the intermediate call, and the late call. And the really nice thing is that's exactly what promises do, because the important thing about a promise is a promise is valid even after it's been fulfilled. So if we get one of these promises for this request to the web API, then it doesn't matter whether we call it before the data arrived or after the data arrived or whenever, it will still behave in exactly the same way. So the trick we do here is not to cache the data, it's to cache the promise itself. So let me show you what I'm going to do there. Let's just create a simple little cache. So we'll just call this underscore cache. Um, and then set it to null. And then in here, we're going to let's spell cache correctly. Um, and then in here, we're going to say if this dot cache equals null. So if it's the very first time that this is being called, then we're going to say this dot cache equals and then the ajax call or the return of the ajax call which is to say the promise itself so we're not as i say caching the data we are caching the promise and then we simply return that promise so if this is the very first call then the cache will be empty. We'll make the Ajax call, put the promise into the cache and return it. But every time subsequently, we will simply be um, returning the previously cached promise for that Ajax call. Which means, as you can see, we no longer have the success or failure passed in because what we now have to do is set those up back here. So now we say with our get service debt get weather, we then say dot then, remember then is a method of promise and that's what's coming back. And so we pass um, that in there. And similarly here, we get back the promise, call then on the promise. And so with really very little coding, we've actually solved that caching problem. Because if we now save all that and refresh ourselves over here, we can see that's still working and that's still working. But the important thing is, let's just refresh that again. Let's go back here to the actual web service. So I've just got a um, web API controller here. And there's where we're getting this dummy data from. But if I pop a break in there and then make our first call, Obviously enough, we go to the server, get the data, 
but then when we make the second call, it hasn't broken in the server because it's using the cached data. And just to make it even clearer what's going on in there, let's refresh it again and let's hit get all. It's now broken in the server. So we're now in that intermediate situation where the AJAX request has been sent but not returned. Now, if I do get warmest, that is now giving us back the promise that has not yet been fulfilled. And then if I go here, we get both our results. We don't get two calls to the server. So you can see it's really, through this promise, covered very easily those three circumstances. So just to recap that, back in here, we can see that the first call comes in, nothing in the cache. So we make the AJAX call, put the promise into the cache and also return the promise. And when the second call comes in, we just return exactly the same promise. And then in here, when the promise completes, however many of these thens are waiting for the result, we'll still get exactly the same behavior and we get the appropriate thing done. So that's with very little code, we've done something very useful, which is the caching, all done through promises. And the key thing to do is that we cache the promise and let it do all the work. We don't cache the results of the promise because once it's got the results, the promise will, will store those for itself. So I hope that was useful. Um, there are a few more things to be said about promises, particularly in using them alongside the async and await keywords that are available in JavaScript. But even as far as we've seen them, I think they're very useful for things like caching and other related areas like that. If you've got any questions, do pop them in the comments section below and make sure you have a look at that um, second video. But bye for now.